Welcome to Previously on X-Men. The podcast that looks back on X-Men comics, movies, shows, characters, and more. And you can find more about this show and others like it at our network's website, RadioMeanwhile.com. Share your thoughts on this and upcoming episodes by following us on Facebook and Twitter at Previously on X. And please rate, subscribe, and share this show on iTunes, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your podcast. I'm Eric Mickles, known online as Dusk vs. Tweak, and with me is my co-host... Hillary Gunning. Actually, I say I'm Eric Mickles and my co-host Hillary, but this is your episode, really, because you you went solo. You went. It's uh, all me, yeah. baby. Hillary, our uh, <laughs> our correspondent on the streets, really, in this episode. That's right. So today's an interview, our first artist interview. Well, we're interviewing, or I'm interviewing, and mm-hmm. you in absentia, mm-hmm. uh, Alisa Martinez, who is an, a comic book artist. Our very first artist. Yeah, we've done a couple. Which which uh. Writers have we done? We've, we've done, done a few um, writers. Jam we've done Dimitres. Jam DeMatteis, who worked on X Factor. We talked to Steve Englehart, who was writing the X Men when no mm-hmm. one else was really writing the X Men. We talked to Fred Van Lente. Uh, it was actually our first interview. Or that was the solo interview I did, actually, wasn't it? Yeah, our first, yeah. Were- <laughs> and uh, David Hayter, who wrote a lot of X Men One and Two, the movies. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Aletha Martinez is the penciler, the artist for the new Immortal Wonder Woman that is featuring a Nubia story. So she has yeah. redesigned uh, the Wonder Woman costume for the character Nubia. Uh, and I couldn't be there for the interviews. She also did an interview over at the All the Books show uh, yeah. for episode 267. Uh, I was there for that too. Aletha Martinez on Batgirl, Black Panther, and more. Uh, yeah. So go over there and listen to that. Which one? Which interview did you do first? Which one's part one and which one's part two in reality? Uh, I guess the All the Books one we technically did first. Okay, so part yeah. one of this interview is over there, episode 267 of the All the Books show at soundcloud.com, All the Books. And then Hillary is going to... Saved our X-Men talk for the one that's coming up right now. Here we go. Alisa Martinez, I'm so glad to have you on uh, our podcast previously on X-Men. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. This is wonderful. I'm so excited. I am too. Okay. So let's get in here. Um, I know that you started with Marvel with Black Panther and Iron Man. And then very close after that, you had Cable, the Cable Annual in 99. Actually, the Cable Annual came before all of them. Oh, yeah. So is that your foot in the door? Uh, No, I came in with uh, Marvel Knights, actually. So it was Black Panther first. You know, ghosting behind Joe Quesada on um, Daredevil. Mm -hmm. Did a couple Black Widow pages with J.G. Jones and then coming in and at the same time on, 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 you know, straddling that line over on DC side, I was co-inking Aquaman mm-hmm. with Peter, Peter Palmiotti at the time too. Again, another ghost project, no credit. So you're doing all this work with no credit and then suddenly credit on Black Panther and then the cable annual came before Iron Man. Is that a very common thing, the ghosting? Ah, well, it was for me. That's how I got my start. I don't think it's so common anymore. I think we're a little bit more egocentric. So (laughs) I want that credit. (laughs) Yeah, people come in with this built in attitude that they are deserving of this position in a 1% club. That's not how that works. Uh huh. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so you did DC and you did more Marvel, but uh, yes. When we we've, we've talked to some writers in the past and they've mentioned some of the similarities and differences between those two cultures. Did you notice anything different or is it just nose to the grindstone either way? No, yeah, you know, ultimately underneath is nose to the grindstone either way, but DC has they give you more time. Mhm. On a book. Interesting. It's, it's less escaping from a burning building. That's excellent. It, <laughs> but but it's more like it's, but then it's like this is like church. <laughs> of course, now they've loosened up. Now that they, now that they're the DC Nation, they're this bigger, badder animal. Uh-huh. But I've always felt like, like you know, Marvel was the place of creative house of ideas. They might try new things, supposedly, mm-hmm. humidly. But you know, you got more styles. You have more humor. You have more. And DC, this is where I go for serious content. Mm, okay. When when I want things to be serious, I want my heroes serious. I want. To hear the big bombastic music when I want to just just in, I mean get into the things that like grip my soul mm-hmm. and I go to DC now Marvel yes but look at how they've changed all of a sudden you have Avengers you know that scene where where Captain America is walking up all by himself mm-hmm. and you're going oh no they're gonna kill Cap right mm-hmm. here <laughs> it's like it's so serious I'm gonna cry lose my mind <laughs> it's like wait a minute. This is what I come to DC for. How dare you do this to me? Ah, crossing worlds. <laughs> yes. So that's the difference to me between the two. At least it used to be. Now, now you know, 
everyone's creative, everybody's dramatic, everyone's, you know, oh, giving me that golden ticket to their beautiful, beautiful worlds. Mm-hmm. So how does that, how do those differences play into the art that you do? Again, you it depends on the book. My art style changes according to the book I'm uh-huh. on. So, but then also it's all some books I could be more experimental and you could really get in there. Like I think that my most favorite book I've ever done was um, Lazarus Plus um, sixty six because they were unbeautiful, gritty, G.I. Joe-feeling characters that you could move around and roll in the dirt. Mm. When you're working on X-Men, they're beautiful. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Storm's hair has got to be on fleek. Uh, of course. That old word, you know. <laughs> yeah. The makeup is perfect. I remember seeing them. It's like, I'm laying around in my lingerie that, I, that is more expensive than anything you own in <laughs> all of your lingerie drawers. And then I will put on this little tight costume that fits on my perfect size double zero body mm-hmm. and go fight crime with a bustier on that just look, look, this flawlessness I've got going on here. And that's more pressure because you're now catering to the beauty of the book and still re- getting in and going, you know what, when I knock you down, that costume is half of it's going to fly off your body. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. You know, they are very beautiful. <laughs> they, they are poised and beautiful these are supermodels this is not this is not your gritty character that you can kill this is an icon and they're handled differently so you're going it's almost it's not that it's boring but it's like it's you've got to be really it's you've got to bring your a game and you've got to focus harder because it's a, a look it has to maintain mm-hmm. and which is which is like to me it's like i need to i, I things i enjoy most are where people's hair are not perfect Mm-hmm. And there, and you can darken them with deep shadows, not make a coloring book out of it. But mm-hmm. you know, you do what you do what the book dictates. Yeah, you almost seem like a DC girl, weirdly. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, talking talking a little bit about about the the way that the X Men are are portrayed, and thinking specifically about the women, because this is something I talk about probably too much on my podcast, but how women are portrayed in in comics and and the other media that the X-Men are in. And you have like the very obvious, you know, male gazy style that you get a lot of those women in. And when I got to your X-Men Gold and a little bit in your X-23 story in Fearless, I was really stricken by the way that you drew those women. And it didn't feel... It didn't feel like you were desexualizing them at all, but they were markedly not sexualized and they felt very natural and very comfortable in their bodies. That stood out to me a lot. Do you focus on trying to draw women in a certain way or does it just come out naturally? You just don't go nuts with the sexualization. I think it, it's it's not a focus. It's not like, cause, you know. If you've seen some of my creator-owned stuff, I'm I can you know roll with the big boys. I've seen it, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, d- don't play. Yeah, that is drill. true. <laughs> but that's that's not necessary in a battle scene because mm-hmm. as a as a bra wearer now for many decades, <laughs> as a bra wearer, <laughs> as a bra wearer, I, I truly understand what underwire does to people. <laughs> <laughs> and when you should wear it and when maybe you shouldn't be wearing it. Mm-hmm. You don't need push-up bras for certain things. Yeah, just so throw I, on so a sports I, bra. Yeah, that, exactly. So when I'm looking at this and looking at what they're drawing on people or how you move in that, I think you have a, a more of an understanding of how you move in certain things. Uh-huh. And then that's, and you go along with the build of the of the woman you're drawing just mm-hmm. uh, just as much as you would with the build of the male you're drawing. Yeah. But there's certain things that when you see them, you know, I know we don't stand in that sexy way with your behind poking out <laughs> and the breast jutted forward. That's true. Especially if you're powerful and the size of the muscles on your body are going to make your arms hang a certain way. So it's That's just the observations point. of the human body. Yeah. So if you're drawing this figure, you have to know the size of the person you're drawing, the musculature of the person you're drawing, and of mm-hmm. course what this person is wearing. And that's going to dictate the set of their body, how they stand. Yeah. So you've got like somebody who's big and powerful and she's supposed to be muscular. She's going to have a larger latissimus dorsi. That means her arms are going to be more formed and they're going to hang further from mm-hmm. her body. She's not going to do that tight thing. Just like you couldn't draw a male in that same way. Yeah. So yeah, you've got to, but to me, they just take that out of there and you draw the super, super skinny lady because you're worried again about that beautiful thing. Yep, you want them to look the right way. 
You got to yes, sell it. So, <laughs> you got to sell it. But you yeah. can still sell it and have and have a strong looking character that's not so far from the norm that you go. Mm. Absolutely. Well, I've noticed uh, several of like the just the big shots that you would have in 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 some of those later books would I would just see like this is a stance that I have seen before. And in other artists' hands, it is that, like, butt-sticking-out nonsense. But you do the same, like, power stance, and it's just, like, a person would stand in that situation. I guess it feels like that really comes from your 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 background of really working on being able to draw whatever. Like, being able to draw men, women, like, knowing the technique and knowing what to do to make it look the way it should look. Yeah, I think that, as I said, a lot about you have to study that anatomy. You mm-hmm. can't make it up. Because if you're copying someone else's anatomy, don't you go back and you study the eight-headed figure. You study the heroic proportions of the figure. Mm-hmm. And then you use that knowledge. If you're copying someone else's style, the very first thing you're going to pick up are their mistakes. Oh, so interesting. You're, yeah, so you start to see that repeating pattern and then pe- and say, well, this is what they respond to. They respond to this scantily clad woman with this unrealistic bust line. And you're going, are they really responding to that or is that because that's just what's there? If yeah. you draw a woman that is more natural, is it really going to drop your sales in books that much? Mm-hmm. I'm not telling you to draw her fat or ugly. Be- believe me, mm-hmm. you don't want to see me running around in Wonder Woman's costume. <laughs> You know, that's not, but you know, there's a time and place. And I think in the thing we're trying to, there's a time and place, Mm -hmm. you understand? And you gotta, we, I know those are difficult words to say because everybody's like, we're all together. Yeah, we're all together in this, but there's room for everybody and Mm -hmm. there's room for everyone's style and taste. But at the same time, you don't have to embarrass me when I open a book by showing this creature that does not exist and does not reflect any form of womanhood whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to talk to you about the uh, the collaborative process, because that's something that comes up a lot when we talk to writers. I think you're the first artist that we've had on the show. Um, what? But they, I know. Well, we're new. <laughs> <laughs> but we've, oh, ta- so, we've so talked to... Wait, just- wait. Yeah. I got I couldn't imagine. I got to imagine. I got to stop you right there. Sure. The first, I know something. They talk about all this, you know working together stuff yeah that's right? what i was gonna ask about <laughs> yeah they, they do they talk about how you know it's best with the collaboration effort where you you talk to your artist yeah we come up with this thing and this vision and, and make it better oh my they word talk about that right yes they do yes. i'm going to give you the words of my teenage son he's come up with a new word oh my this, this year yes yeah, so he'll see something and it's incredulous and he'll just go <laughs> <laughs> Oh my word. That is yes, it's an all encompassing word. I like that. It is, and I like it when I'm talking to him and he'll give me that answer. I'm like, what? <laughs> Just start laughing. Because it's it's hilarious. Because yeah, you, you get it and it depends. All of that depends on how much time I have. I if see. I only if I only have three and a half weeks on a book, don't talk to me. <laughs> I'm not good and quite frankly, if you're talking to me a lot I'm going to tell the editor I don't like communication that's uh-huh. not through the person who should be watching this because usually you want me to make changes that weren't approved uh-huh. and you're not getting me in trouble because I'm the one that's going to be blamed for everything you do <laughs> so they that's what they me. call collaboration <laughs> yes it's like you 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 are what you are are the shield oh man and you're going to absorb all the abuse when someone doesn't like something, who did they come for? It's like, I didn't like that. Mm-hmm. Yours is visual. <laughs> it's right there in your face. Of course it was yeah. your fault. <laughs> I always tell people, it's like, you know, this is a visual medium, a visual storytelling. So you're responsible for the who is doing what, where are they doing it, and maybe you'll find out why they're doing it. Mm-hmm. So, and just in that that list I gave you, visual, that's what the, the writer doesn't control. That's my job. Yeah. And the why, I have no control over that. And we meet in the middle. That's the collaborative effort right there. Okay. The who, what, where, when. Yeah. That's the part we're doing together. And my job doesn't overlap yours in a sense. And yours doesn't overlap my. I can't control you. You can't control me. Yeah. They try. On many occasions, you'll get scripts that are so direct you can't see it. When I read a script, I run through it like a movie mm-hmm. in my head. Mm-hmm. And then I start to sketch out these panels. But I rarely even do layouts because I've seen the movie. 
And oh, I'm just yeah. drawing from the scenes that are in my head. But, you know, as far as it's like, I think, and quite frankly, I think a lot of it also has to do with my gender and what they believe I can and cannot draw. Mm, mm-hmm. So, so which is always, even after 21 years in the industry, that's still pretty big. It's like, is she going to draw the Iron Man armor soft? It's like, what the hell are you talking about? Soft. <laughs> yeah, see, what, am I going to draw breasts on him? Was that what you're worried about? <laughs> you're I very guess. ladylike. So what are you going to bring to it that's ladyish? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I know. It's like, it's like, have you met me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my words. <laughs> I was like, I'm the barbarian that had the baby on the weekend and went back to work three days later. Oh, wow. So, hey. I was like, yes. Yeah. So it's That's like, here, you're here Monday. Yeah, you're okay. Yeah. I kept the baby awake. He'd come out looking angry. Like, you come into bed anytime soon? What? <laughs> People need to sleep. I'm trying to grow here. You're keeping me awake out here. Yeah. <laughs> Have the Rafa Khan on. I like the movie, but, you know, enough at three o'clock in the morning. Well, so, of course yeah, he, he likes the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. He's got to. That's his first movie. Well, okay. So if this if this is if this is how it works, so how does it work differently with? Because I read comics that have like three words to a panel, and then I read comics that are like seventy words to a panel. So how does that change how you are able to tell the story through your art? Well, it depends on how the script. What kind of script do I get? If I get a full script, meaning it has. This every panel is being described like a snapshot. Mm-hmm. That's how it should be. Like you've taken a Polaroid and only describe what's going on in this Polaroid. If you if it has some dialogue, it might not even be the final dialogue. It lets me know a little about the emotion, so I can answer the who, what, where, when, how are they feeling mm-hmm. while they while this is going on, and it helps me, you know, let the characters act. And that's again with the X Men, you can do very little of that acting. I love the the X-Men gold annual that I did because not only did I get to redesign Captain Britain. Hey, Mm -hmm. that's fun. I love that. (laughs) I like the beard. (laughs) Yeah, I I love the little beard and I got to draw the baby, which again, that's a hard thing to draw a baby. Most people draw them, they look like little trolls or adults or or changelings. But, and then if you notice, she was breastfeeding that baby. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Very nice. that's That's what you do. But you know, I got to do a little bit more, a little bit more of a stretch, but they still had to maintain that level of beauty. So mm-hmm. I couldn't really take it as far as I would normally have taken it. But you just, you've got to hold it together. And that also affects how dramatic it's going to look. Mm-hmm. So it all depends on that script when you first get it. That script is going to tell me, and of course, the, the title itself is going to tell me how far I can take this and how I can stretch it. And what I can actually bring to this table, is it going to be new or is it going to be more of the same? Yeah, yeah. Well, I got to ask you while we're talking about collaboration, what was it mm-hmm. What was it like when you got the chance to work with Chris Claremont and Louise Simonson in Black Sun? You, you know, Chris Claremont, again, that if I was, remember when I told you story about being, I told a kid picking a book and not getting very many books? Yeah. That was reading Chris, Chris Claremont. Of course, it's, yeah. It's it's amazing. It's like imagine now you now you're here and you're working on something that you honestly no one could have ever imagined mm-hmm. you could have done. And here it is and this script comes and it's damn near perfect. Ah. And it's it might be wordy, but it had that feel. I mean that feel that, that thing I like about stories where I'm actually telling a story and not drawing a set of pinups. Oh, that's so good. So that's like where you're really, you just like, you're just into it. And to me, I can, that's why I think I can pick out the books along the way that I felt were as complete. And then the rest of them and tend to fall to the wayside because they don't cater to the story in the same manner at all. Mm-hmm. Or you don't get enough of the clues. Cause remember, they're not really responsible for telling me why I can work on an entire title and never know why. And then mm-hmm. get on a panel and they asked me why, and I'm like, how would I know? <laughs> Ask the writer. <laughs> yes. Of course, I don't say how would I know, but I'm really looking like, you, you, did you think that was me? Do you I try to come up that. with a reason? Do you just make it up? <laughs> no, no, I never do. Because you'll be wrong about it. You, they'll, And whatever it is, they'll change. No, no. Part of being... Part of being with the with within the industry is also knowing that you have to toe the line. Uh-huh. And you don't speak above them. You speak when they tell you to speak. You mm-hmm. do as they tell you to do. That's how I've learned. Yeah. Now I can say I've seen my male colleagues and I've seen other people, especially girls coming in after me, with a lot more freedom. They don't know that level of restriction mm-hmm. that to this day makes it difficult for me to navigate. Like I said, I 
can't I hear people say the words, Oh yes, I went for that book. I don't know what that's like. Mm. Even now I don't know. That's why I keep speaking something, trying to turn it into reality for myself. Yeah. Because I don't know that. It's like imagine I never had to show my portfolio around after the first couple of times. Mm -hmm. In twenty one years work finds you and you go, Oh, well then you're lucky. No, you're not lucky. You're a slave. You're mm. doing as you're told. Mm -hmm. Am I part of the creative collaborative process or am I just regurgitating your vision? Mm -hmm. Is that something that kind of haunts you? Does it haunt? No, it, it's a long time ago. I used to go to parochial school and a nun told me you're never going to get anything that, you know, enjoy anything that you that isn't yours. Mm hmm. So for the Eisner win, for the GLAAD award, for all of this, for all these years, for everything, it's not mine. Hmm. So I'm not invested in that kind of way. The day I see my Yumi and Ever or my Foreign or my Ningyo mm -hmm. out there, and that is something that's sitting on a comic book shelf and people are buying it and reading it and feeding me, that's mine. That's yeah. when I would feel that love and that power and that's meaning I have arrived here, but I'm not here yet. In some cases, like with foreign, I'll probably never be there wanting to be a writer, a sci-fi writer, mm -hmm. a Hispanic sci-fi writer. Mm -hmm. I've been told many times that my name is too flowery and ethnic for publication. Well, that's just insane. Well, how many female Hispanic yeah. writers do you, uh, writing sci-fi, serious sci-fi, do you know? You're absolutely right. So... Another mountain. That's why I say I'm halfway up up Mount Everest. I've got a long way to go. So I can I will toil my entire life knowing I might never reach a, a point where I am well received. Hmm. But that is that is well done as long as the people coming up, the girls coming up behind me, the immigrants coming up behind me. I'm first generation American for my family, and to know that you can do this too. Mm -hmm. You just have to work for it. That's oh yeah. All. Yeah, you're definitely doing the work for the people behind you. <laughs> it's definitely true. Tell me more about this sci-fi you're writing. Oh, my beloved foreign. Because I, I tell you, I, I love, love so much all that old Robotech stuff. So I've got planes that fly in space, but they don't transform. Uh -huh. But I'm doing that from a future perspective. 600 years in the future, you've got this Earth that aliens have now settled upon the earth population is shrinking and mm -hmm. their protectors live out in space because we broke off from they broke off from the human race now they're different they say you know what all these other aliens are going to live on earth i want to go too let's go see let's mm -hmm. go try to reintegrate with our with our once people but they're like oh no you all are way too aliens you've been sleeping with too many aliens and we don't want you to sleep with no aliens so of course the first arc of the book starts with my beloved Stephen Sundival committing the ultimate sin and being punished for it by being kicked out of the human race. So we watch his five months of torment. Wow. Yes. Well, that sounds I, fascinating. <laughs> yes, and available on www.aridstorm.com to download. Ooh, all right. <laughs> www. Was it Aaron Storm? Ariot. A -R -I -O. Ariot. Yeah, A R I O T S T O R M. Okay. Com. Yeah, check yeah. that out, man. <laughs> okay, well, before we wind up, are there any characters or series that you'd like to work with that you haven't got a chance yet? You you mentioned Superman. Yes, and Namor. Namor. What do you like about Namor? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> do you, you, we, we've spoken for a while. I feel we're old friends now. Of course. You know, I think you get a, get a little sense of me. What do you think I like about Namor? You're a comic book nerd. <laughs> You feel yeah, like right. you're going. <laughs> all right, <laughs> I got gotcha. you. It's like, yeah, yeah. Remember his first appearance? He appeared naked. I'm like, oh wait. So I'm a little girl, and I see this book for the first time. I'm like, ooh. Well, see, this that? is why your grandma didn't want you looking at comic books. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. But you know, it's just, but you see how a girl can have a different perspective. Like, boys, they want to see the rolling fights. I want to see the rolling fights, too. In fact, roll him into the light while we're fighting. <laughs> just move him over a little bit. Can't move quite, yeah, quite get so, that. So, just, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh yes. So while you're hiding, sneaking the Playboys play. And, oh, look, I got right here. There. Look at this. Oh, look at this. Yeah, you boys are skinny. Look, at you. you'll grow into this one day. <laughs> to your friends. And then it doesn't happen. You get it upset, doesn't happen like, that way. Yeah, they mm, don't quite. Mm, mm. <laughs> no. 
So see, we can be disappointed too. We don't look like, you know, Storm. No, we don't. No. <laughs> you don't you don't look like Namor. Sadly, so yes, we what, don't. <laughs> <laughs> so what do I like about Namor? Yes. That, that and of course he's dark hero. Oh my god, he's Sephiroth. That's how he should look. Mm-hmm. Cause that you know, right? You could see that. I can, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They should give me that book. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> Just march in there. This is what I'm drawing. <laughs> we have this one. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we'll just wind up there. It's been such a great talk. I've really enjoyed talking with you. Man, this is fun. I should I should do this more because, you know, pandemic times, you don't talk to people. Now you're even more isolated and alone. I'm stuck in here with a feral kid who's upset about having to go to school tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? All right, well, thank you so much. And one more time, your website so that people can find you? www.aritz.com storm.com awesome great thanks so much thank you for having me all right bye-bye hillary i kind of don't look forward to having to edit the episodes that we do oh yes because they can be very long if they're about movies or oh, if they're the do we have do we have long episodes eric <laughs> if if Are it's the long? animated series i have to edit in sound samples now oh i love that though but i did like no editing on this interview Hey, nice. It, it was it was probably the smoothest ep- recording of this episode I've ever listened to, and I'm starting <laughs> to think maybe I'm the problem. We, I just loved having that chat with her. We yeah. had such, I don't know. Yeah, it was fun. I, I don't know. I feel like maybe I would have gotten in the way of that interview with like bra underwire and stuff. <laughs> So. Once we started talking about bras, I was like, this is probably good for just me. <laughs> it, it was, <laughs> but it's funny because like, I can't think of, I mean, it's something that like a lot of, I, I mean, it's something that when like you look at art, especially of female characters that like you think about like, well, that can't be, we, we've made fun of it with uh, some of the comics we've read, even in the animated series. Sometimes they're just in like a negligee. I'm like, well, you're just yep. doing that. You're just like making yourself a ham sandwich at 12 o'clock in the afternoon in the negligee kind in of negligee. situation. Yeah. And like women, I think, <laughs> I think most men have to be honest and admit like as much as they like the eye candy, there are moments where it's just like, is that really something that would happen? But like in that interview, <laughs> you just hear like, no, it isn't. And it's nice to get a different perspective to tell you that it is stupid. And it's so. nice to give it that she also does the, she does the like cheesecake. Kinda, yeah. The cheesecake art. Yeah. Cheesecake art. Is that a thing? That, I mean, but that, yeah, that's she the does term that. I've heard. Yeah. And then she also like when it's her, when it's her, yeah. you know, time to shine, she'll yeah. do, she'll do the legit stuff. Yeah, how many covers have you seen of Psylocke where somehow she's got both her breasts prominently at the cover and yet her whole mm-hmm. body's turned and so also her butt. her butt. Yeah. Yep. She's like breaking her <laughs> spine to pose for this X-Men cover. I, I, it's, it cracked me up. You're, you're so innocent when you're like, why do you like Namor so much? Hillary? <laughs> Have you seen how little Namor wears? I, know, I didn't cost, know yeah. she was gonna go there. <laughs> it's that that speedo is as, as as small as it gets in the comics from the first intro. Uh-huh. So here's a question, and I might cut this out if I sound stupid. You when you're I hope you do sound stupid. Both of Eric. you were talking about how uh, we shouldn't have to like be embarrassed when we open up a comic and stuff, mm. and also like the body issues that you can get in with that. Do you think? movies are better at that like do you think like scarlett johansson as black widow and uh elizabeth olsen as scarlet witch and like the way they're presented in the movies fixes like that or do you still think there's like a level of embarrassment because that's a really that's a tough question i i mean i think i think saying do movies do it better is pretty broad because well, i think yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot there's a huge array right. of that i yes. think that there's an extent to which yeah. people are tr- people are trying to do better mm-hmm. i think that i think when you have like a female director mm-hmm. you end up with a lot a lot better stuff yeah um with that kind of avoiding the male gaze element it's- i think mo- for the most part the uh, the marvel movies are doing less with that than say a uh, Wonder um, Woman or a uh, um, more recently the Birds of Prey, which we talked about. Right. How that feels a lot different. Yeah. So I think I think there are I think they're trying in a way that mm-hmm. maybe comics don't as yeah. much. So sort of yes and no, Eric is it's... what I would say with the uh, with the art in comic books. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's less 
feeling like you should be looking like that or feeling like inadequate in some way mm -hmm. and more like looking at it and realizing this isn't for you. Yeah. Like when you open a book and you see Sure. like the the Psylocke and the butt and all of that stuff, yeah. it's it's more just Nobody was interested there, in appealing to me yeah. when making this book. There are plenty of comics that I've enjoyed that, like, I'm like, well, I, I don't know if I could share this. It's embarrassing. The art's embarrassing <laughs> in this stuff. <laughs> True. So it doesn't matter, like, how good the story and the character is. Once you open it up, you're just like, I don't know if I can show this to Kendra. So yeah. <laughs> it's just... She's my wife. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I when I was reading the... Psy back to... Psy I read, like, the Psylocke miniseries. It was just four issues. But the cover is just her and that. And she saw that on Goodreads. And I'm like, I know. I didn't even think I should put it on Goodreads. <laughs> It's just, it's embarrassing. But anyways, that was a fun interview. You, she, uh, Aletha Martinez seemed to just be very uh, game and- uh, very it, frank. Oh my, yeah. I really when you, I liked it. When you asked about the collaborative process on, oh my gosh, uh, on writers so and funny. artists. Because she's just like, I bet you they told you it's like this and this. And it's exactly what they said. <laughs> it's so like funny. Every yeah. single one of oh, them. Oh yeah, if you don't have a good artist, your story's not gonna come out well. You wanna you wanna work together, you wanna be <laughs> passing notes, and she's like, Do not send me notes. I know. Do not call me. I'm turning my phone off. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now it kind of like takes away a little bit of that magic, like, oh there there's it's a symbiotic relationship. They they complete oh, each other. So no. Funny. No. Uh, yeah, we got to get more artists here so we can get more frank discussions then about writers. <laughs> I know, right? So, <laughs> What's, that's what we should do for both mm, sides. We should be mm, like, now tell us really. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the notes. I, it was nice hearing about how Chris Claremont, even in a perfect script, is still a little wordy. A little bit. A little, little bit. Still a little wordy, Mr. Claremont. But <laughs> <laughs> So you can go to Ariot Storm. So that's A-R-I-O-T storm.com. For Aletha Martinez's uh, webpage. Also, uh, big in the news lately because she designed the Wonder Woman. The, the new Wonder Woman. Oh, that's, that's uh, right. I just saw that. I, I say I'm Dust versus Tweak everywhere online. I'm Eric Mickles, but I barely showed up in this episode. But you're still Dust so, versus Yeah, I mean, those are still dust. true. I said but, it wrong. I said yeah. Dust. Yeah, I might as well have been voiced by Hillary in this episode. Like in the animated series, when they get the Colossus voice actor to also play Juggernaut. <laughs> so yes, just Hillary, throw Hillary should be like, I'm it. I'm Dust versus Tweak, and uh, I don't know. Speak. That's not what I sound like. That's exactly what you sound like. Uh, apart from other shows on the Radio Wild Network, I'm the co-host of the podcast, The All the Book Show. Thank you to Prophetic Music for our theme song. Join us next episode as we're going to watch Logan. Logan. The movie Logan. Uh, Eric's gonna cry. I am gonna cry, or maybe I won't. I've only seen the movie <laughs> twice in my entire life. And I've cried at the end both times, but not at the end, like, during the credits. Like, I go off and have a cry. I'm so. gonna be... So mean. So disappointed. <laughs> oh, if I no, don't I cry? No, I won't be mean! Okay, if I don't I cry, you'll be mean. disappointed. Listen... I'm gonna be disappointed if you don't cry. Um, I want to have the full experience. I told Kendra the next episode was gonna be Logan. I was like, alright, I'm gonna go off and watch Logan. And she's like, no, please do not watch Logan. Don't watch it for this episode. You remember it. She is not wanting me to watch this. And then I was oh, like, I won't. I'm going to do it next week. She's like, oh my gosh, you're watching Logan after the election. Oh no. So <laughs> uh, a lot of how, I, a lot about how either one of us feel, I think about Logan depends on what happens in the future. Yeah, I think that yeah. desco that desolated uh, uh, post Western hellscape that we're about to watch really could mm -hmm. depend. Our emotions could depend, depend on this <laughs> next week. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll just see how that goes, yeah. everybody. So I I don't know. I probably uh, yeah. It's I'm just break up and I'll be like Hillary. I'm mortal. I'm mortal, Hillary. <laughs> Nobody so. lives forever. Uh, uh, so yeah, that it's we're coming to the end with these movies. We got Logan. To watch, mm -hmm. and then it's Deadpool 2 and Dark Phoenix, and I guess, in its own way, New Mutants, if either one of us ever get to if see it. If we'll that. ever get to see it. Now, isn't that, is that available I, somewhere? I think it's still in theaters. At, at the time of recording, I think you can still go to a theater and risk your life to see New Mutants. <laughs> to see New Mutants. Yeah. Worth it? Question yeah. mark? I mean, if you're doing that, you might as well just go see Tenet and every other movie that's on screen at that time. If you're like, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll the dice on my health yeah. here. Just watch them all. <laughs> 
Just ask him to play it all in one screen. Just bring a space suit and go to a oh, theater. Yeah, that's the way to do it. I guess that's how we should. Uh, I can't find a uh, a drive-in that's playing New Mutants. That's how I'd go see it. We have been trying basically yeah. since it came out to find a drive-in that it's, would play yeah. it. And now that how perfect a movie it. is that for a drive-in? So just waiting for it to either show up on Disney Plus or Hulu at this point, if that will ever happen. Maybe by the time we get to it. I mean, we still got three more movies. Yeah, we got time. All right. So thanks for listening. Again, you can find more about this show and others like it at our network's website, RadioMeanwhile.com. Please follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Previously on X. Please rate, subscribe, and share this show on iTunes, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your podcasts. And thanks for listening. Thanks.